Let me tell you something. If there are chicken wings being served at a party, I'm 100% going for those first. That's how much I love them. In fact, I'm not sure there's a wing out there that I don't like. But what I wanna do in this recipe is use as many procedures as I can think of to pull out as much flavor as possible and ensure they are super crispy. We're first gonna start off by making a rub. Sound good? Let's cook. So what I'd like to do out of the gate is dry brine these chicken wings. Now what dry brining is, is salting food and of course adding some other spices to help draw out moisture, which creates a brine and then soaks back into the meat over time. It makes it extremely flavorful, it helps in the browning of the skin, and it helps to make the skin crispy, which is exactly what we want. Now you can dry brine anything ahead of time before you smoke or roast it. The results are always awesome. All right, so we're gonna start off with this dry brine slash barbecue rub to help achieve that. We're gonna start off with a little bit of sea salt. I'm gonna add in three tablespoons. Next, I've got two thirds cup of packed light brown sugar. I'm gonna add in one and a half tablespoons of garlic granules. I like the granules better than the powder. I just think the flavor is there a little bit more than the powder. Next, one and a half tablespoons of onion granules, one and a half tablespoons of paprika, one tablespoon of ground mustard, one tablespoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You can go heavier or lighter here depending on how much spice you like. And last but not least, one teaspoon of cumin. I like those earthy flavors. Then what we do is just whisk this until combined. And whenever I make rubs, I always make them in bulk. Why? Because they last on the shelf for up to six months for all my other barbecue recipes. It's great to have. Also, take a taste. What else does it need? More spice, more garlic? You be the judge. And no joke, this rub would go super well on brisket, chicken, pork shoulder, or even ribs, whether you're smoking them, cooking them in the oven, or just grilling them. There's a lot of flavor in this. I think you're gonna like it. All right, here's what we're gonna do next with this rub. We're gonna take about a third to a half of this recipe and transport it right over to another bowl. Now for another little secret procedure, I'm adding in one tablespoon of baking powder, not baking soda. Now, if you don't have any baking powder, what you can do is substitute in some cornstarch. That will also work to help draw up moisture. Now using a whisk, mix it together until it is completely combined and free of any big chunks. Set it to the side because guess what? It is chicken wing time. Now you've got three main parts to a chicken wing and they usually come connected when you purchase them from the grocery store. You've got the tip, the wingette, also known as the flat, and then the drumette. And it's funny, over time, I've actually learned to like the flat or wingette the most. I think there's more meat there. Maybe it's that extra bone. Maybe it provides a little more flavor. I don't know. I've got six pounds total of wings here. And I know that seems like a lot, but there's so many bones in these. I'm probably only going to get two and a half to three pounds of meat. What we want to do here first is separate the tip from the wingette from the drum. Here's how you do it. Place the wing right on the cutting board. What you're looking to do is find the joints and split them right there. So right at the tip, separate that using your knife. Now for the wingette and the drumette, find that joint right in the center, press down firmly and slice through just like this. Now what we're gonna do is repeat this process in its entirety until all the drumettes, the wingettes and the tips are completely separate. Now take those wings and drums and place them to the side in a very large bowl. And Comey's, don't you dare throw those tips away. These are gold for chicken stock. You put them in a bag and you pop them in the freezer until you have enough ingredients to make chicken stock. All right, here's what we do next. Using a huge bunch of paper towels, yeah, you're gonna use probably quite a bit here. We want to squeeze and work through all these chicken drummies and wings. We wanna get as much moisture out as possible. This is key to ensuring our skin is nice and dry. And there's really no easy way to do this to ensure the wings are completely dry. Do the best you can. You may need several paper towels, but I'm gonna call this good at this point. What we're gonna do now is add in that baking powder mixture with our delicious rub. Sprinkle this all over the top and then get in there with our hands and mix everything around. Get your hands in there, push, pull, squeeze and tug you want to ensure this barbecue rub has completely coated on every square centimeter of these chicken wings. So every bite you taste is extremely flavorful. 
Once they are coated, I'm transferring them over to a rack on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Be sure to spread them out a little bit. We need them to breathe. They are now going directly in the refrigerator uncovered. And you can dry brine for 12 hours and all the way up to three days. We're gonna do 24 hours. And the reason I kept them unwrapped is so that the moisture can evaporate, ensuring that our skin is gonna be super dry, which will make it extra crispy. Alongside that baking powder dry brine rub mixture, I'm telling you, following these procedures, these are gonna be amazing, all right? I'll see you tomorrow for the smoke. All right, it is day two. I've loaded up the yoder with some pecan pellets, cranked the heat up to 225 degrees Fahrenheit and got that smoke rolling, and why? because we wanna smoke these now. Remember, I told you I was gonna to try to do as many procedures as possible so that these are absolutely delicious. Yes, yeah, smoking is gonna bring a lot of flavor into these. We did the dry brine with the baking powder to help draw out some moisture and still create a delicious brine that's gonna make these flavorful. We air dry them all night in the refrigerator. Next step, smoke flavor. Now this isn't an all day smoke, okay? These are very small. They're going to cook fairly quickly. I can't imagine that these will go any longer than 90 minutes. We just want to get it to about that 150 degree range. Let's go get it on the smoker. You have two options here. You can place the rack that the wings were resting on all night right on the smoker, or the other option is placing them directly on those grates on the smoker. Now I'm going to do this. I want to pick up some more of those smoky flavors and I don't know if that rack will last in there. All right, these look really good. Be sure to spread them out. We want smoke to seep through and cover the wings on all sides. Another important thing is get a thermometer, run it through and find the biggest wing you can and stick it right in the center. Next, we are just gonna close the door and wait until they reach 150 degrees Fahrenheit internally. You know, my father-in-law told me once I had my daughter, there'd be a period of 10 years where I wouldn't know any mainstream music. I would only know kids music. And you know what? He's 100% right because this is all I can think of. Chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and balloon. And my daughter still sings it to this day. It's probably ingrained in my head for the rest of my life. All right, we're halfway through that smoke process. We're at 100 degrees. What we want to do is get it to 150, maybe only another 30 minutes or so. All right, we're at 150. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is come back. Let's have a quick look. The wings look fantastic. The skin is already starting to crisp up the smell to die for. Remove that thermometer. Next, grab every wing on there using tongs, or if you have some nice barbecue gloves, transfer them over to a plate, platter, sheet tray, line of parchment paper, whatever you have. Let's bring them inside and rest for just a minute. It actually took around an hour and 45 minutes for these to get up to 150 degrees. Yes, I know it's 15 minutes longer than I said, but you never know when smoking. But we still need to get it to 165. And I said crispy wings, right? Now, if I were to leave them in the smoker at 225 degrees for it to get to 165, the skin would still be rubbery and not crispy. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. The first one is by deep frying for only a couple of minutes. Now I lost the plug to my deep fryer, but I was still able to use the insert and the basket, added in some oil and any neutral flavor oil that you want will work for this. Choose what you want there. Then I got it up to 350 degrees and here is how we fry it. Grab those wings, bring them right over to our fryer here. We are going to add in a few at a time. You're going to have to do these in batches or else things are going to stick together. So maybe about a third to half of the wings at a time. Dunk them down 350 degrees Fahrenheit for only two minutes. This is going to be plenty of time for them to brown up, but also finish cooking them through to 165 degrees. And oh my, just look at those. And one of the biggest questions I get is, what do you do with all the leftover frying oil? Well, as long as it's not burnt and overly brown, you should absolutely still use it. But you first need to strain it through chinois or even some cheesecloth. Store it at room temperature, totally fine. You probably got four to six more uses out of it. And remember, when you're heating it up, it's going to probably 350 degrees. I mean, that's going to kill everything out there. You're going to be totally fine. All right, for the next procedure, we're going to grill them up to get that skin extra crispy. So whatever grill you are using, crank it up in between 450 to 550 degrees. This is optimal searing temperatures for a grill. One thing I do love about my Yoder pellet smoker is this firebox. Yeah, you can take that top off and get direct heat, direct flames, and it will sear beautifully. Once everything is preheated, 
we're going to lay the wings right over that open flame. Now, you have to be careful. Whenever you're cooking on a grill or any open flame, things are going to want to burn. So you're going to have to constantly move them around. A little char is good. That's nice, tasty flavor, but you don't want to burn anything. This cooks for maybe a minute and a half for them to get nice and crisp up. Once they're done, we're just going to set them to the side to rest for a second. And it is always about those fundamental cooking techniques, putting them into practice over and over again to elevate your everyday cooking. In return, your homemade food from scratch is always going to taste better. Using that dry brine, letting them air cool all night long, smoking them, frying them to get them crispy. Oh my gosh, these are so good. All right, you have some options for sauces. You can use my barbecue sauce, like in my Smoke St. Louis ribs video with barbecue sauce, cider, cider vinegar, a little bit of water and butter, or you can use my buffalo sauce and my extra crispy breaded up chicken wings. Either would be awesome, but here is how you plate them up. Transfer all those cooked fried wings or grilled wings to a very large bowl. Now, whatever sauce you wanna do, slowly drizzle or add it in while constantly tossing the bowl around so that all the wings are coated beautifully. Now to plate up, you can put them on a plate or a platter, and if you want, you can garnish with a little sliced chives. I'm pretty sure if you wanna impress some folks at your next get together or party, these wings should do it for you. And if you wanna pair them up with some really cool barbecue style sauces, I've got an awesome recipe video, four different sauces. All of them would be so good in these. I'll see you on that video. We got a lot of wings to eat, a lot of football to watch.